Oh. And my daughter just just asked me, she'd be hearing about this. Could you please explain it? She's in the car racing somewhere and I had like eight minutes to try and explain V Taiwan to her. And <laughs> she flipped out. Yeah. Uh, appropriately flipped okay. out. So are we gonna see you, Audrey? Yes. Um, <clears throat> as soon as I'm um, fully dressed in something. Oh, excuse perfect. me. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm again, I'm again literally in bed, so. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> just since you're recording. I won't uh, push anything. I'm... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of my questions, a, a lot of these I went, went back over my uh, old list of questions, so I have stuff, I have things there that I've sort of extracted, I'm still curious about. But a lot of the new stuff came from your New York, uh, your New York tape, Xiang, uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, I just took lots of notes during it, and I'm, I now know enough to get down to more details, and one of the things I'm interested in, I get this picture from Audrey the everybody just so sort of floats in and organizes things and floats out and whatever happens the only thing it could have and it's yeah and uh, and that's very intriguing and I love it I love the imagery uh, and trying to apply my experiences in open space particularly five-day open spaces which are totally different from one or two-day open spaces uh, and sort of saying, how would you actually live that? Um, and then there's all this staff, uh, staff and interns around Audrey. And then there's this, uh, the sense of uh, Gov Zero is floating around. All these things intersect and stuff. But I'm just mm -hmm. curious, because there's a number of times when um, you Xiang say, um, we did this or the community did that. And I'm going, okay, well, who is we? Who is the community? Is there any kind of sense of roles uh, mm -hmm. that are, is there a container? Like, does the staff hold a container of process and support uh, and options and you can come talk to them and what, I mean, what, who's doing what through all this? And then we decided, you know, when we were finished with the Paul list, I'm going, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean when you're finished with the Paul list? Who's, who's deciding we're finished with the Paul list? Who's, who's inviting these stakeholders? Which stakeholders are being invited to the conversation? I mean, what's, what's going on there? So anything you guys could say that will help clarify all that, I would love to. And yeah, so, so um, a clarifying question would be, would you be more keen to, to learn about V Taiwan as of this week or V Taiwan <laughs> as of 2015? Because <laughs> this, this week is more my interest, although I am interested in the evolutions and how it came that way. But my, I'm, I'm wanting, as I said before, I made the mistake of saying, and I'll make the same mistake again, looking for a place to stand in the quicksand in the river. Mm -hmm. uh, you can never step in the same V Taiwan twice, I gather. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm interested in that fact. And as it's evolving, there's stuff, there's things, there's some kind of here's where we are sensibility and here's where we, what we want to check out or try mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of X and Y and I'm, mm -hmm. I just to get a better sense of it mm -hmm. because I want to communicate about this mm -hmm. in a way that's realistic. Mm -hmm. And I, I am not in any way resistant to the constant change mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. iterative feedback loops and all that. Sure, but sure. I, so let's, let's just let's say take something is open snapshot. space, everything happens, right. and that doesn't tell right. anybody what they might do to, and I got right. it, but it's, it's you guys and the way you look at your scene and interact together and all that, which is, fundamentally at the core it's not the abcs that you do you are creating the abcs as you go but if there's no abcs there's nothing remotely like what you have could show up anywhere else mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right so so why don't shu yang describe 
a snapshot of the V Taiwan、uh, meetup this Wednesday, which is like literally two days ago,、uh, and maybe the week before, and and I'll I'll、um, try to illustrate、um, in the meanwhile、uh, and see if、uh, that helps clarifying things. Well, all、um, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so two days ago on Wednesday.、Um, Uh, I think because we always book a room、um, at a certain time frame on Wednesday、uh, afternoon to to evening.、Right? So、um, so two days ago we kind of started from three o'clock around three four ish.、Uh, we booked open kitchen、um, inside the social innovation lab, and I remember I wanted to work on something.、Um, so、I, I give up my friends. There to kind of work on a vehicle that's supposed to carry a camera around. So people online over、uh, also wanting to participate in V Taiwan could、um, participate、uh, with a live stream video, and they can have a control to to the vehicle which is carrying、um, carrying the, the 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 camera. So、uh, I invite some friends I consider as makers, and I I ask them if they can help. And so that was. Uh, two days ago, and there are some other people from different backgrounds, like two other researchers working on observing open government scene in Taiwan, and there are、um, people who are、uh, there to discuss about、um, the current、um, issue that is launched on Taiwan about data privacy, and. Um, just people kind of just gather together and chat whenever they want. And there's also a friend who is making a startup, and she really need help for for some brainstorming session. So she were here, and and kind of grab us whenever we have like five minutes to put a post-it to her wall. So yeah, so that was last week. Uh, uh, that, that was two days ago. And last week,、um, there are some and people. And also, also the POs came, right? Yeah, also the POs came. Yeah. Yeah. PO from Ministry、mm-hmm. of Uh, transportation and communication. They they can. They just came. They weren't. There wasn't an an issue. They were responding to or something. They just came because they're part of this coming and going community and see what happens. Kind of. That's exactly right. Yeah.、Okay. Uh, she she's here to share the the birthday cake of our court reporter, our stenographer, Wendy. So so <laughs> so so people came for for, for her birthday cake. I think that's the general idea. <laughs> There you go again. <laughs> yeah, it's an open space, so she can actually make a cake. It's an open kitchen, even. <laughs> yeah. And、right. we have lots of fun talking about the fun you have, don't you, Audrey? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and yeah, the the data integration、um, excuse. I mean, the topic、uh, is currently at the snowballing stakeholder、um, stage.、Uh, so data integration. We have a topic. Data, we're not data integration. We're not totally, yeah. We're not totally topicless, yeah. And is that、mm-hmm. somehow all the people are involved, or that is a that was some kind of formal invitation sent out to people saying, if you'd like to come talk about data integration, we're going to be here, and people know, oh, that's the that's the big thing. Anything can happen around the edges, but that's the big thing. Or、mm-hmm. what? What does it mean that that's the topic? No, right. The the, the the snowballing survey was、uh, finalized last week,、uh, and so we have a URL、uh, to the snowballing survey.、Uh, so it was co-edited last week. Actually, no. Shuang got everybody drunk and、uh, brought them to to dinner last week,、uh, and Lisa and I remained to finish the the questionnaire.、Um, so it's actually two spaces <laughs> last week.、Um, but but before they were drunk, they were very contributive.、Uh, I think.、Uh, anyway, so、the、we, we have a contributive fun part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is the context. The context of the snowballing survey. I the only part I've seen a reference to that is.、Mm-hmm. In the asking stakeholders, who else should be involved, kind of, but I don't. Yeah, know that, that, that's right. That's exactly right. So if you go to Vita right now,、um, so the the front page says data integration. We have a we're having a snowballing survey. And what happened? And then you have you have these slides、uh, prepared by um, some um, actually a law firm. The Guoju Law Firm explaining the current situation, challenges, and whatever. 
around data integration and open data uh, and data governance in the current uh, administration. And the snowballing survey, um, I think, is oh. this link. Uh, and uh, okay, it starts so you're, by... You're already uh, at the stage of getting getting uh, stakeholders. Right. And, and it, it starts by explaining what data is, what uh, anonymization is, what encryption means, uh, you know, all these uh, small lexicons uh, to define a key concept. Right. And it begins saying, have you ever requested data from the administration? Uh, and if you have, uh, do you do it for, you know, um, the citizen supervising purposes, academic purposes, commercial purposes, other public interests or whatever, uh -huh. right? and, and you can choose as many as you like. Um, and then it starts saying, you know, but what, um, what have you requested? Or are you looking to request next? And if you have been refused before, or you haven't, that's the lucky option, um, whether it's because if it's confidential, it's private data, um, there's no rule uh, for providing it, or there is rules prohibiting it. And if yes, what? Uh, and um, we have a currently a platform to request more data. Do you think the platform is good enough? Uh, and the benefits and whatever. So it's a rolling survey because, because at the end of this survey, which is rather long, um, we, we ask people to identify more stakeholders uh, and provide their email if possible. Um, and if not, well, at least, um, you know, their names and we'll try to find their emails. Uh, and here is the snowballing part. And it, very interestingly, actually, uh, snowball, the, so the, it's actually it's actually yeah. a survey about your relationship to this issue exactly and and, and we the, we the name is people. optional yeah the name of the person filling in is optional because people may want to anonymously fill in this the so email is also results, optional. the results um the results of the survey is a sense of what's going on in this field in this on this issue at this time kind of uh and then it's rolling, it's snowballing because you're getting more and more people who mm -hmm. are theoretically interested in this topic, uh, mm -hmm. have an interest in this topic. Yes, and, and the yeah. final question is, do you agree to receive more emails uh, if we have more rolling snowball surveys like this one? And so, uh -huh. of course, we sent it to everybody who have previously agreed um, on previous questionnaires like this, and we send it out to all the different communities uh, that the people um, are associated in the Open Data Taiwan group, uh, the GovZero group, the, the whatever group. Um, so that's people's contribution before they get really drunk last week. Yeah. Right. yeah I'll have to digest okay. that before I can ask more questions, but I have an overview. I, I understand the strategic placement of the getting drunk. But uh, <laughs> but, but there, there are some real uh, issues going, real, real topics we, we are uh, discussing in the in the Vita One Hackathon, and it just mm -hmm. it's there, and we can uh, like before last week we were discussing about how to formulate the questionnaire, and before that we probably were discussing about different angles to to look at this this issue. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah. this this issue surfaced from somebody saying at some point we really need a thing on this topic and other people going yeah that's a good idea and a bunch of people get together and they start working on it that's exactly right there was a petition from like five six people um in the yeah in, in the v taiwan um well only one of them are actually a regular in the taiwan community the other ones are uh, from the wider GovZero community, from the Open Data Alliance, um, there's uh, one running for uh, the councillor now, actually, uh, Saul Peng, but he used to work in the Ministry of Economy Affairs. Uh, and so it's a, it's a diverse bunch of people all want more data integration uh, who so, raised this subject. So the, 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 again, I'm trying to understand the pattern here. So the, uh, the petition is posted on the v taiwan site somewhere there's a space for putting up petitions and then people sign 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 and a petition you know people notice that a lot of we have 20 people who sign this now let's get together and talk about what we're going to do about it or what's what's the line for petitions showing up there's there's infinite lines of petition the, the <laughs> easiest one 
the easiest one is just to show up in Wednesday during my office hour and talk to me, right? So, so, so the office hour、um, just takes one person. You don't need twenty person. It's not online. You just come and visit me, right? So, so that's the the the, the fast track. Okay,、so、stop there. Stop、yeah. there. Okay,、so、sure. Stream, yes. To fast stream, go talk to Audrey. So you've talked to Audrey and. Audrey says, "Oh, good idea. Why don't you do X?" Or Audrey says, "I'll take it and post it where." I mean, what happens?、Mm -hmm. They're petitioning you, the king. <laughs> oh, king! <laughs> Here's my petition. <laughs> and Audrey does what? Why would they come to you? Well, in, in all fairness, they can also、uh, petition to the、uh, prime minister, who is also touring around the Taiwan the same way I do.、Um, so, so it's not just me who, who are doing this office hour thing. Yeah, the prime minister is doing this. Same. Anyway,、huh. um, so so people are petitioning because they they understand that、uh, we'll have a complete transcript made of whatever, whatever material they they, they talk to you. right while while they talk to me, and this will be useful because that's what the Bihar community will use to、um, to to elicit people's interest、uh, in talking about it or to determine whether it's not interesting、uh, uh -huh. and. So we, they're we have, taking course, their conversation.、Right. They're taking their conversation with you, which has a link to it, and they send it to their friends and whatever. There's a networking thing that happens, and people notice notice it, and then start to get together to act on it. Right, and uh, and um, in this particular case, the data integration petition actually happened in the National Open Data Advisory Council. Which is a council of experts on open data and so on. It's advisory, and I'm not the chair. The chair is、uh, another minister with a portfolio, Wu Zhengzhong, who also、uh, insists that all the open data related、um, consultation meetings、uh, are published in full in 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 transcript, and so so that also results in a transcript.、Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, people can go to join the gov. tw, which is a place where Uh, people who has more than five thousand petitions will always get a response. But actually, if they what they petition is of、uh, high political interest, like the the Mac、uh, tax filing system、uh, is explosively difficult to use,、um, then we actually make a response when it's fifty people, not five thousand people.、Uh, but but the so point here is that we the always take petition just gets the petition goes、right. and posts is posted there. And、yes. people, various people, are checking out the petitions and signing this one or that one, and、right. depending on what the what the dynamics、right. around the topic right. is, right. a lot of and, and, a lot of numbers,、yes. or a few numbers, will get a response. Right, and and here is the where POs come in because POs interview always the petitioner here because in the in the office hour or in the National Open Data Council, it's a face to face. Meeting with very high bandwidth and very、uh, firm understanding of what's going on, and we're making a transcript of it. But in the written petition in Join GOV, there is no such、uh, high bandwidth. We just have you know five five hundred words to work with. So、uh, the POs always arrange for someone to interview the petitioner,、um, so that's, so that's that it results 5, in the transcript. Is that the five thousand?、Uh, yeah,、level? they they always so interview. As a rule, when it reaches five thousand, but for cases that are really interesting to the PO themselves, they may arrange、uh, the interview well before. The PO or the other people in their ministry.、Um, the responsibility is in the PO. PO may、uh, delegate to other people in the ministry. Uh huh. So the head of the ministry doesn't necessarily decide that the peti this petition is worthy, and tell the PO go interview them. It's more the PO is just that's their job. Yeah, PO PO is, PO is extremely autonomous. They they just look、uh -huh. at it and say we we got to handle this one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. I have a few steps here. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Anything you would like to add, Shui?、Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's clear that the POs can、uh, choose any、uh, any subjects actually, not only from join website also. Like it, they they can.、Uh, Um, they can just bring up any issues they think that、um, it will be nice to discuss with their broader network of、uh, mm -hmm. people from、uh, maybe from like people they could have could couldn't even imagine to to talk with from the beginning. So if they, if, they, if there's any case、uh, in their ministries and they, and they feel like okay they want to、uh, interface with more people,、uh, oftentimes they can、um, they actually. Can、uh, bring up in the in the monthly PO meetings, and we、we'll、also do a transcript from that. And、um, it's possible to be brought up 
to to read Taiwan as well. Yeah. So so transitional justice. Um, the the committee for transitional justice is a new member in the cabinet that we're going to have in a couple of months, and they will take on things like um, on our coins and bills. Uh, there are um, the figures of Chiang Kai-shek. And do we want the figures of Chiang Kai-shek to re remain on our bills and coins? Mm. So very soon we will have a new PO uh, from the Transitional Justice Committee. And I'm sure that they won't wait for 5,000 people to petition uh, <laughs> to, to bring this for discussion. And the Central uh, Election Committee also has a PO already, but they have not finished building the National Referendum Act electronic system. And once it's there, of course, I, I expect that things will surface uh, from that platform too. <clears throat> So the PO function is one of the uh, accelerators or attention enhancers points of initiative in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to see if everybody is, if, if when you look at how something comes into be at any given point in the system, any decision is made, if everybody is always totally equal in that, or if there are points where Initiative, initiative is expected or is institutionalized. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is an example of the kind of thing, even though I understand there's nobody mm -hmm. stopping anybody from interviewing anybody and posting it. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you know, there, are, there are certain things which, which, uh, yeah, it could which be, create could be order, emergent out of order out of all this. Yeah, it could be PO who made the initiatives. Because, um, like, for, for example, two days ago, PO also came to Vita One Hackathon. But for for Vita One's uh, context, uh, anyone can take the initiative to to um, to say to bring up an idea of launching a case. And if there's only the, the only requirement is to have um, a contact also from the government side. So mm -hmm. meaning every issue has to to. Uh, has to have uh, both com commitment from the society side and also the government side to be able to launch on the Vita One's platform. And oh, that's, that's interesting. Probably the no. only requirement because we need to be able to communicate between uh, the two different. Uh, okay, and the POs are the point people for the government side. They're, they could be, uh, they but could be. for some cases, um, it's some other people uh, like the National Development Council. The NDC people are also, um, oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention, NDC has also its own platform. The, the law that NDC uh, platform where people can have petitions, but it's more like they pinpoint the parts of regulation that are out of date uh, um, as regarding to technical or technological progress. So law that NDC is uh, what we call the platform economy. Um, regulation. So the platform e economy um, regulation, the platform economy adjustment uh, regulation is a regulation, which I used star to, um, to denominate here, uh, is a process in which that anyone can propose a platform economy um, case and uh, say that the current law um, is uh, currently in gray area in this. And the law that NDC people uh, we'll make sure that it's uh, deliberated um, both within the government and also with the civil society. So the platform economy regulation is one of the empowering regulations and in which case the POs are not necessarily involved. The NDC can just become the government contact and then ask for civil society. By the way, the platform economy regulation is one of the product of the v process. So it's, it's trapping again. <laughs> right. Again, yeah. the what do you call it? The public, the platform economy regulation. Coming, the coming around. When I'm losing my words already. Uh, the re, not regressive, regressive, not recursive. Recursive. Thank you. Recursive yes. public. Mm -hmm. uh, recursive dynamics. Okay. Well, that's a new dimension I hadn't seen before. So any basically from civil society. Any that anybody can play that role from the government. Mm -hmm. There's particular positions that play that role. Mm -hmm. There's particular parts of the government or people like the POs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you. Well, that's 
so then there comes the process itself as you get in you have you i i gather the the creation of the educational materials or mm -hmm. what we might call briefing materials here mm -hmm. uh is a i'm i'm assuming that that's sort of an open space open source anybody can put their two cents in and you have a you have some some structure that can make sense of that where mm -hmm. some, a lot of people dump stuff information in and then somebody mm -hmm. sorts it out or is it like a wikipedia mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. how's that unfold and when when do you know the process is done and ready to go on to the next step mm -hmm. um so that's two questions actually so shu yang yeah. may want to handle the, the first one how is the the xiao zidian and the uh, jianbao and inform, informative materials right. So most, mostly uh, it's um, in the, so we always say Vita1 community actually means whoever is kind of having an account in, in Vita1's platform and also uh, who have interest to participate in the Vita1 hackathons and so on. So it's actually a very broad community and probably we have around <coughs> thousands of people right now. But um, they are, they have the status and identity. They are specific identities that have associated themselves with Vita1. Yes, and yes, they're, they're, they're on people. the Slack channel, for example. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people bring, bring their skills, like um, there'll be people who are good at um, translating um, more difficult law terminologies to uh, easier to understand uh, description. So those people will be in, uh, will take the lead to, to, to make an open dictionary and we call mm -hmm. it and it's, okay, and they are volunteering for specific roles, or they have said, "I'm mm -hmm. interested in doing yeah. this." If somebody's contacting that's, them. That's exactly right. Um, yes. Yeah, and okay. also um, oh. probably people who are in charge of the the, the case uh, in the ministries, uh, especially public servants who have been uh, working on this case for for a long time and understand the regulation very well, and they will be helping. They'll, they'll help out to put out the slides. So there'll be um, the slides trying to describe what the issue is about, and um, People who are good at, um, for example, design can try to make the slides more um, with a better presentation. Um, and maybe sometimes we, we also make a logo for that. Sometimes we make a tagline just for um, the viewers of Vitaon's website to understand <laughs> not only <laughs> not only the name of the case, um, but also a tagline to understand. So what this issue is actually uh, about and what other com controversial points people can probably start to look at um, from the beginning. So it actually yeah. does that. There's a sense of parallel to Wikipedia. I mean, it's an urgent, an emergent organization, but it is an organization. People have roles and there's certain kinds of lines of communication that are, and, and Wikipedia, there's ways of tagging things so that they show up and somebody particular can attend to that piece yeah, of so puzzle, whatever. Right. The current status is we, um, we we know to launch a to launch a case on Vitamin's website. We probably need the dictionary. We need the the slides. Uh, we need a name and tagline, and some description. And to fulfill all of that, we uh, just, we just make few cons. I think that's in the last video I already described about con, right? So mm -hmm. so um, we just kind of make this all um, all requirements to 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 launch the Vitamin case as different cons and ask people if they want to join and, and help out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you're, the symbols you're showing me are different roles that people have in the system that get, that they choose which labels mm -hmm. they want? That's right, so these are the standard Gov0 stickers from actually two years ago, there's okay. many more stickers now, but, but that's the usual stickers. Um, so somebody can use. have six stickers and I'm interested in participating in these six ways kind of. That's 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 exactly right, and so so wow. this is to to dig a a con for other people's fall in, I guess, and this is to volunteer to fill uh, a, a a gap that somebody has identified. Uh, I think these two are the most important. Oh wait, no, this nobody one is the most important. Uh, so in, in a, <laughs> right. that's um, where you are, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So so yes, yeah, and and as as Rian said, um, for for a uh, Vita in case to be published, uh, we need to have a title, um, preferably in English and uh, in Chinese, and uh, we need to have pictures, pretty pictures. And we need to have a summary, which is a few lines, um, and we need to have slides. 
uh, and we need to have a small lexicon uh, and we need to have some timeline. Um, and we can have a lot of other supporting materials, but these are the essentials. It's funny, I think about the pattern language that Martin and I put together and a lot of these, I would, be, I would love to have a community of practice on a pattern language where this kind of organization happened and the patterns would emerge with all those things attached to them. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. so all this is happening, bustling along, weeks, months mm -hmm. go by, uh, it's mm -hmm. getting fuller and fuller, there's more and more people adding more and more stuff and mm -hmm. where does it stop or does it not stop? Somebody just decides, let's, we have enough to start with, it can continue on developing, but we're gonna do, start the next step. Right, so to, to start a snowball rolling, uh, usually, we have people on Slack, on the mailing lists, uh, in face-to-face -face meetings, um, and in quite a few um, ways to, to signal their um, comfortableness or uncomfortableness of, of going on. And um, once we have a general sense of rough consensus, usually in a um, weekly meeting, uh, at the end of the meeting when people feel it's generally okay for both people online and offline, then we will publish it. We won't publish it if anyone uh, identify any blocking issue with it, which would just say, okay, we'll spend another week on it. So it's a very, very slowly convergent process. So the weekly meeting has people who are doing, who are involved in significant roles in this together. Uh, and they're like looking at where are we, where are we, where are we, where are we? And then it's sort of, emerges one time people are going huh okay it feels like now's a good time to move on mm -hmm. the weekly meeting is mostly the people who yes. are right. who are involved in doing this particular process mm -hmm. okay. yes and, and who are excellent pushers who will enlist people who are more qualified oh. than they are if it, it requires um other expertise <clears throat> shu yang is an expert in this so part of so so it's not just that they were participating but they're going to be participating in the next stage also mm -hmm. and their ability to network out and reach people is as important mm -hmm. as how how ready the informational material is mm -hmm. yes and find facilitators wow. for it which is necessary for the next stage hmm. find facilitators for what who who will facilitate a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, making That's... a digestion of the snowballing survey. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm imagining, I have a, had imagined a um, Paulus thing in here after the, mm -hmm. after the snowballing, but you're saying that- that, that may happen if we reach, let's say, a few hundred people that we think, okay, Paulus is warranted. Okay. So- so if there's, okay, now I'm understanding your thing about it being efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's gonna be some kind of uh, reflection on what has unfolded and it could unfold <clears throat> through the, the rolling survey. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had the rolling survey as something that is used to identify stakeholders. And that's it, it is. One, of the, it is. one of the processes, but you're also, gathering information in the survey mm -hmm. yes so the sur the information of from the survey is going to be given to a number of the stakeholders for a face-to-face -face. Mm -hmm. or there's going to be if there's lots of people there's going to be a uh, polis mm -hmm. uh, and the results of the polis will be given to a bunch of stakeholders that's exactly right Yes. Okay. So there's like those two separate. Right. So it identifies the stakes and the holders. Right. Yeah. Uh, identifies the stakes and the holders. Huh. Interesting way to put it. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. So when when is it decided to do the face to face, and who decides that? And again, any, anyone can throw up a, a live stream meeting. Um, but okay. usually to get community support, you will need a neutral facilitator. So at any time, at any time you have the, uh, you're doing the survey and the 
results are kind of being compiled as you go. There's not a mm -hmm. stopping point mm -hmm. for it. Because so, we have to check in every few days to snowball it. Uh huh. So this is where we've gotten to. This is where we've gotten to. This is where we've gotten to. And any time along that where somebody goes, I feel we have enough for me and the stakeholders I have in mind to go ahead and do a interview or do a not an interview a uh, mm -hmm. a facilitated a, 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 yeah, yeah I got a facilitated I, conversation. I've okay. talked to my friend Joe and he's a facilitator and he's going to facilitate that and I I'm going to pick seven people out of this and pull them in and we're going to have mm -hmm. a conversation mm -hmm. and yes. that could happen. 17 times you know it's all grist for the mill and the more times the better kind of it's not yeah, like for for the social enterprise uh case that literally happened 17 times so yes <laughs> oh <laughs> picked it up out of the field <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's not like there's going to be the stakeholder conversation uh which is somehow decisive these all these things are kind of overlapping and w with the and again anybody can do it okay i could see how it's organized to allow that anybody can do it and anybody can view it this is a way for people in the public or the government to take action in the ways that are you, you provide a whole pile of ways to take mm -hmm. action reflect on on this issue and try and make decisions and all the rest and you just sort of create. yes and, and seriously the the only thing we ask in return uh is for the facilitator to um be somehow um, um known to the to the community uh ideally coming to the weekly hackathon but it can also happen uh in a remote fashion uh and like in the social enterprise uh, uh case um, there are things that are held uh, by, by by the MP, actually, MP Karen Yu, but she's holding it in the capacity um, as a social entrepreneur herself. She was one of the pioneers of fair trade uh, coffee uh, in, in, in Taiwan. And so she held this stakeholder meeting. And uh, again, um, all the VTAIWAN community ask in return is that for them to relinquish um, copyright to a degree uh, so that we can include this uh, in the Vita One website and circulate it and use it as material for next stage uh, deliberation. Okay, so and there's no, it's not like there are standards that are required in order to either facilitate or convene a conversation, but part of the transparency is this is the nature of the person who facilitated it, this is the nature of the person who convened it, these are the stakeholders that were there and people can pass their own judgments on what's most dependable. You're just mm -hmm. providing space for people to do these and presumably mm -hmm. people who aren't being paid attention to because they're incompetent will ultimately mm -hmm. drop out. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's right, that's right. And because every week we review uh, what has been happening in the stakeholder communities, if they need a facilitator or need, they need facilitating technologies, uh, the technologists, uh, including communication technologists, um, also have their own, I would say, workshops or collaborations. Uh, for example, Xu Yang uh, knows about this uh, this person who came um, a lot uh, in the previous weekly meetings. Um, hai Chen uh, is now working on a um, technological tool that lets people look at official documents like PDF files and um, identify the points pro and con uh, to it and automatically surface them into a mind map. And that works pretty uh, well in other technical tools that we're working on um, that kind of take the police idea clusters, but uh, drew down um, to uh, the relationship between the issues identified as well as potential solutions, as well as the potential stakeholder who can provide the solutions. It's called issue-based mapping. Uh, and so there's going to be workshops in the mm -hmm. Sense team and the IBM team uh, are going to co-create uh, the tools uh, using concrete cases, of course, but uh, working more on the tool uh, level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's an example of the expansion of the tool set that uh, Gov Zero is always kind of poking around in. 
and trying yes, out. Yes, yes. So that's the design uh, part the, in it, the UX part. And the yeah. tools just sort of appear and get talked about. And after a while, they start getting used more and more. And that's the evolution of the, of the system. And if it's proprietary, then we uh, try to railroad uh, the creator to open source it. Uh, but <laughs> like if it starts as open source, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's already open source. We're we're now trying to to connect the railroad to a uh, central uh, dispatch, right? Uh, so in any case, uh, yes. But otherwise, if it's open source to begin with, like Sense or like IBM, then it makes it easier for people to integrate this into the design process. <sighs> Yeah, and I think it's interesting when projects emerge, uh, when, when projects merge, like when, when uh, the sense, sense that TW team came to uh, IBM team and because I think both teams are kind of in, 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 in lack of some resources the other team actually has. Mm -hmm. They're complementary. So like, yeah, so it's complementary mm -hmm. to, it, it also makes sense to, to merge and, and talk about what are possibilities. Of course, we can create something together and work more different versions uh, afterwards. But it's really good to have this kind of collaboration um, between different, different fields. I can understand it at a sort of theoretical level, but I have never been in a, a geek group doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I can sort of feel what it's like and go, wow. I mean, it's mm -hmm. definitely a, a growing, evolving ecosystem. And I know mm -hmm. ecosystems well enough to go, okay, this is what's mm -hmm. happening here. Well, well, but you can think of it like the Chinese uh, Wikipedia article on acupuncture being pulled into the English article on acupuncture, and they have different viewpoints on the same thing, and they have to merge its conflicts. But it ends uh -huh. up being a better article on acupuncture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, my first contribution to Wikipedia. So I always use this example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, there's something that's just dancing. I wish I had more sleep to be able to be more, uh, more zippy in my responses, but I'm, I'm getting the. Maybe maybe, maybe can I share some feeling also when I when I joined uh, Look Up Zero mm -hmm. community before like you come up with more questions. Um, <clears> yeah, well, I have I have a lot of questions, but there's some yeah, questions so sort of pop into my mind and then fade into the. Yeah, yeah. The distance, sure. but I have ones written too to ask. But go ahead and. Uh, I'm, uh, part of me knows you can stay on a little bit longer, right, Shia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can. I can stay on until noon before my lunch meeting. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And we're gonna. She has one one hour time. more than I have. Yeah. Okay. So part of me wants to make sure I'm getting whatever I can from. Sure. Yeah. Audrey before he goes. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so I think you give me a sec to look. Um, I got what that is. Uh, Okay, I've got what that is. <laughs> it's funny how well you covered all this. <clears throat> uh, you have, yeah, I would like to uh, poke, you know, all that. <laughs> it's, I, it was a breakthrough for me to sort of see the parallels to Wikipedia, which again, I haven't engaged in detail, but I have dived into the background community a number of times and seeing the complexity and sophistication of how it self-organizes. And uh, uh, so I'm, I see that as a parallel. Uh, yeah, then there is the talking to Taiwan, mm -hmm. which I gather is just one of the many players that can convene a conversation. Yes, and they're the they, film people here. Yeah. They decide. They decide who they want to interview and when and all that. It's not. It's not as if they are the key players. They're just, and they're a group. They're just a group. They're not an official channel. You know, organized mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a business or something. They're just a group of people who have certain. Mm -hmm. and material and 
They just yeah yeah do it. yeah. At, at, the, at the end of the day, they're they're just a a um, loosely coupled team with a bunch of Slack channels and a crowdfunding website that has some amount of money, and and that's it. Yeah. Uh huh. And they they have managed to garner particular attention, but that's just because they garnered particular attention. They don't have any consensus well, or official you know, role. Yeah, I, I'd say that's because they have excellent um, designers. Uh, uh -huh. Their website looks really, really pretty. Uh, and um, <laughs> the, the content is released under a Creative Commons license, which enables the connection to Polis and to the Vitalik community. Right, right. Okay, you say the outcome of the conversation can then be used to make a draft bill. Is there a group that a group within uh, V Taiwan that does a, let's translate this all this material into a draft Please. bill? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a group so yes. or is that something that's done by by legislature officers? So uh, again, uh, my answer is the same as last time. It depends on whether it's a regulation or it's a law. Uh, and the process differs slightly. Um, if it is a regulation, um, usually um, the ministry will have the final say of how it looks like. And so the government points of contact here uh, will be actually the primary people um, translating the consensus points into regulation and going back to be Taiwan in the draft stage uh, for another round of um, direct feedback, um, including the name of the regulation, the platform economy regulation was used to call the sharing economy regulation. But during one of the consultation meetings, everybody hated that name. So it's now platform economy uh, <laughs> regulation. <laughs> but on V Taiwan, the URL is still sharing economy. So yeah, because we can't change the URL very easily. And in, in any case, um, so so that kind of dynamic, um, this cross feeding dynamic uh, happens well into the draft stage for regulations wow. is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, but if it's a law, um, ultimately we depend on the parliament. And so um, we more consciously include MPs uh, in the process in the hope that the MPs uh, will know the context of the drafting stage. But we will not always uh, write the legal text um, as suggestions for the MPs. Uh, we may uh, translate it into a little bit more uh, clarity, uh, a little bit more coherency. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, the, the actual text is between the administration and the, uh, the parliamentarians. Okay, so the, you're basically playing a role of briefing the parliamentarians on here's what a lot of people think and here's a lot of the issues that are involved, here's what they think should be done, over to you. <clears throat> yes. And it doesn't have the same feedback loop that the, uh, that the POs have. Um, yeah, because once, once it's in the parliament, of course, they may hold public hearings and so on, but the, the community okay. or the committed uh, ministry officials can just be summoned there, right? We're not agenda setters uh, in the parliament. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's, that's one of the interesting places because one of my, there's ways in which one of the images, narratives, metaphors I use is of you guys creating a demonstration parallel government, not mm -hmm. one that necessarily is is implementing things, but the dis decision making dimensions of uh, of government. You say we can do this. And that's why it's a part of the story of the sunflower movement was that mm -hmm. you guys demonstrated you could do it better than, than the part. Right, it's a demo. Kind of, it's a demo. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. that that's an ongoing thing. And there's a way in which, in some contexts where the government was not particularly receptive, but there was a lot of grassroots energy to try something mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. It could be sold to uh, grassroots supporters as mm -hmm. we're gonna show that we can do this even better than the government mm -hmm. to, to pull it off. And the government mm -hmm. may or may not listen to it at all, but there may be some, some ambitious politicians who recognize a, a wave to ride when they see it and say, hey, we're gonna pledge to do what the, the people say uh, and and that gradually infects the government mm -hmm. that way. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so this this happens um, in the 2016. Um, the People's um, Judicial Reform Movement 
Uh, and we really want Billy here, but I can't do a pale imitation of him. Uh, so we have to, uh, Billy Lin, uh, Lin Yu Chang, who, who wears many hats. Uh, <laughs> he, he is uh, one of the PD's colleagues, um, but also a retail and regular, but also leader of the People's Judicial Reform Movement uh, 2016 but also advisor to the official presidential people, uh, presidential judicial reform forum uh, a year afterwards. Uh, he's also founder of the Social Democracy Party, uh, one of the co-founders. So he, he wears many hats. Um, but in, in, in any case, um, so the, the PJR started by the um, uh, judicial reform uh, association um, and is a grassroots, totally button up, no government binding power whatsoever. Uh, way to apply the V-Taiwan process uh, to the um, ideas of uh, judicial reform, to increase trust between um, people in the judicial system by uh, deliberating things like um, citizens' jury, and uh, we don't have a jury system, by the way, uh, and many other um, possible innovations. So it is just applying this, uh, but it, it's not, uh, broadly speaking, it's not um, listed on the V-Taiwan platform. Uh, they use the V Taiwan discussion forum uh, for one aspect uh, of it, but um, it has its own website and its own branding and everything. Uh, and But the, it, it really resulted in a demonstration uh, to the presidential office that this process is feasible. And so uh, then the same process uh, adapted a little bit um, is then um, becoming the, uh, has then became uh, the, ju the justice that president that uh, GOV.TW, which is the, um, the pre president's um, take mm -hmm. on the same process, uh, and oh. which is binding, by the way. So this yeah. was another, so this was another um, uh, example of piloting, prototyping something, and because it worked successfully, and there's a mixture of public support plus, you know, and pressure plus the willingness of politicians to go along with it, suddenly a version of it is taken up and adopted by the government. That's, that's exactly right, yes. And, and it, it itself is an example of V Taiwan was modeling something and they picked up that to adapt to their, their kind of scene and then their kind of scene was picked up and adapted by the government. So there's a whole evolutionary, you know, mm -hmm. pollination, pollination, pollinization. Mm -hmm. Kind of activity. Uh, yeah, yes, cross pollination <laughs> and, and all that. And the, the, the folks who did the electronic platform for the presidential version of this uh, is called uh, Watch Out. Uh, and the, the Watch Out group um, is, again, very fluid organization. The watch out engineers, the, the three uh, watch out engineers and designers was part of the original v team in its original version, uh, who did the initial version of the website and, and everything. Uh, and now watch out um, has, um, for example, Yu Zhihao as a designer who, again, from time to time, uh, come to v meetings and get drunk. Uh, but officially, they are also also the vendor uh, to uh, take on cases like the presidential um, judicial reform process, the John Hesher Memorial Form uh, Memorial Hall reform process, and other processes. So they are a vendor, a social enterprise ish organization um, that um, um, institutions that sells this to institutions. And again, we have very close but not formal relationship with lots of watch out folks. I had this funny impression that within the last couple of days, somebody was communicating to me from Watch Out and I didn't recognize it and threw it in the trash and I'll have mm. to go dig around my trash and see if, see sure. if I can find out what it was. I recognized mm. it. So, uh, Shu Yang talked about challenges at the end of your presentation, Shu Yang. I don't know mm. if that's something you want to uh, address with Audrey. Mm -hmm. Curious, what, what's the content of those four mm -hmm. items that you put out? Yeah, Audrey mm -hmm. knows all my slides. So I think we, we talk about yeah. some challenge, some current status, and how we can mm -hmm. 
uh, we could po possibly improve V Taiwan from from now on. Um, mm -hmm. Although it's a very uh, flexible recurring system already, um, so it actually depends on what kind of uh, what are different types or of people and what are different skills we have in the community. Um, but there are some uh, some bullet points probably we pulled out that that can describe the challenge of V Taiwan right now, and we'd like to kind of attract people who can help us on that. Will mm -hmm. be uh, to attract more, um, more uh, um, to attract more more people uh, in the sense of people mm -hmm. with different different um, um, dy dynamics in their skill sets uh, to participate in V Taiwan's. Uh, mm -hmm process so in terms of there are different cases different uh, issues launched on the Vitaman website but sometimes we need to have a different kind of mindset to help us out on uh, re reformatting the slides or um, have a different look on the open dictionary so it would be nice to have mm -hmm. people from different backgrounds to participate as well so how to how to increase the um, participation uh, on the process and also um, <clears throat> the comments of every issue on Taiwan's case. So there's uh, there's different branches of participation I'm sensing that some of it are the mm -hmm. the people who are part of the uh, the geek kill, skill community or the people who are actually mm -hmm. creating the platform for people to engage in these different ways on and you would like to have diverse skill sets mm -hmm. in that and then there's a question of increasing the people who use those platforms as you know as stakeholders or public you know ordinary public citizens who come and you want to have have more numbers and more diversity of those mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, both yeah all mm -hmm. of them yeah we want to attract all of them and and when we mm -hmm. talk about stakeholders we actually are thinking um, not not really so much about the the the, the, the uh, quantity of the stakeholders but but actually um the dynamic stakeholders. So if, if there's an issue, we can interface more stakeholders from different, uh, let's say different different groups, different backgrounds, then then it's very good enough. Uh, <coughs> instead of having 4,000 people from the same background and talk mm -hmm. about the same. same right, right, yeah. the, 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 the thing is that a snowball works better if, um, if it starts from the polar sites in the opinion, um, right, groups, so that the snowball would work like this. But if we just start from the these corners, then we don't actually reach that much people from the other sides. <clears throat> right, but um, there are, yeah, there's many different ways to cut the pie, as they say. I mean, there's mm -hmm. functional roles that people have in the dynamics of the system. When mm -hmm. people say the whole system, get the whole system in the room, they're usually looking at the different functional parts of how things are unfolding. And then there's perspectives, opinions, uh, you know, people are for or against this or that. That's a different kind of diversity. And then there's mm -hmm. demographic diversity. There's all these different kinds of diversity to uh, you can deal with. And in my general theory, as I think you already know, uh, Audrey, is the, the sense of diversity. Whatever kind of diversity you use, if you can have some way of having it interact uh, creatively, you'll end up with something better than you started mm -hmm. before the ground. So I understand exactly. having but I'm curious also because I'm, my roots are more in the, you know, one person, one vote kind of democracy, the sense that we're all equal citizens, which is a very, mm -hmm. it doesn't use diversity in a sophisticated way. It's just saying, mm -hmm. you know, do you have the right to participate? Are you a member of the community? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're stuck into a process which uses you as one, one data point in the whole thing mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm curious to what extent, I know you have the sense of stakeholders and I'm fascinated by your division of the stake and the whole the stake as the, here are the issues involved, the interests involved, and then there's the holders of the stake, the people who are identified with one mm -hmm. part of that or not, which I think mm -hmm. is a really interesting way. I've never mm -hmm. cut it apart before. Um, mm -hmm. Stakeholders are usually in the, uh, in the circles that I go in, uh, people who have <clears throat> an explicit interest, they will be mm -hmm. impacted in a, <clears throat> in a way that they're very aware of mm -hmm. in the outcome of whatever the issue is. Mm -hmm. And 
that they either they or representatives of them, like the representatives mm -hmm. of the union, uh, mm -hmm. are there as that piece of the system. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact is, everybody is a stakeholder in everything, but they're just mm -hmm. not self aware, self defined, mm -hmm. and organized mm -hmm. in that way. Exactly. <clears throat> they're not so, networked enough. Yes. And there's something mm -hmm. when working with the um, multi sector, multi stakeholder emerging governance group that mm -hmm. I'm part of, mm -hmm. uh, I learned that this ordinary citizen perspective is place based. Mm -hmm. you, know, you are a citizen of a place. Mm -hmm. And that that's mm -hmm. the way the society is organized with government, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the yes. mayor or the president or whoever in the legislature at a particular level of place. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm sensing all the time that stakeholders is who you are looking to engage, both in your information mm -hmm. generation and in your mm -hmm. evaluation of that information. Mm -hmm. uh, and the public in general doesn't show up in a visible, mm -hmm. explicit way. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that's part of your whole approach or if you're trying to expand that. You'd really, your idea would be everybody in Taiwan is involved in policies on every issue that's raised, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a, if that would be an ideal at a theory level or that's mm -hmm. not even an ideal. You just don't operate that way. And you don't, the, the public as an abstraction, you're not really interested in, you're really interested in the diversity of stakeholders. Well, um, the, 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 thing, the thing is that if, if people don't know, they're not, you know, well informed uh, as of their relation, all right, their stake in this uh, topic. Um, they're, they're, of course, they may be interested in learning about it. And we do engage, uh, like all our materials can be thought as, you know, a introductory uh, material on civics uh, around public issues, right? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, when we ask all the ministry to publish all its um, yearly plans, monthly plans, uh, their KPIs, their procurements, their whatever, um, on a common platform, what we're looking at is not people who um, do a meaningful vote or referendum on it. We're asking people who are interested in it to ask clarifying questions if they have one, to have a real-time um, dialogue with public servants, um, to engage in organization themselves in order to discover their stake, um, and so on. And so what I'm getting at is that um, there is no abstract public, if that's what you're uh, asking about. <coughs> there are individual citizens who may not be aware that they are related to this issue in some way. Right. And there's many people in the V Taiwan community, and especially the Watch Out group, Talk to Taiwan, and the other uh, more media oriented people who are trying to connect people's um, attention to their stake. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, we're not a referendum platform, but um, the community is, yeah. to my knowledge, very willing to help to police um, the, the concerns before any referendum so people can have an informed choice before the referendum <clears throat> happens. But we have no ambition to become the referendum uh, platform. Right. of. There are, there are other things that I think you are, I'm pretty sure you're already familiar with, which are based on the, <clears throat> on the in, in, uh, individual citizen <clears throat> The individual citizen body considered collectively, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is usually the word public refers to. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll get to that in a sec, but I realize in this conversation, uh, any given agency or whatever has a, um, uh, has a group of stakeholders around whatever kinds of decisions it's making. Mm -hmm. But there's also the issue, the fact that the resources that most governments work with Mm -hmm. are taxes mm -hmm. that are theoretically paid equally by all the citizens. Mm -hmm. So your the money that goes into government mm -hmm. is governed by tax laws mm -hmm. and the money that comes out of government is then filtered out through these different stake channels. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it feels like that's, um, and it's not just budget, it's that the, there's, there's some theoretical value in the will of the public as to the general direction of where we're going as a mm -hmm. city, as a society, whatever, 
Mm -hmm. And the idea of the, the sortition thing applied mm -hmm. at that level, it's like you have your citizen jury, not in the judicial sense, but in the mm -hmm. Jefferson Center kind of sense mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. about some public issue uh, or the Wisdom Council, Jim Ruff's, you know, random mm -hmm. selection. And then we're going to talk, we're going to talk together as randomly selected members of the community. We aren't, we aren't in any of these categories. We may be, mm -hmm. but we're not being convened for that reason. We're being mm -hmm. convened to be a generic member of the community and to look at mm -hmm. what the community needs and come to some kind of agreement about that. Mm -hmm. The effort, to, a lot of my work has been an effort to generate a legitimate wise voice of the collective public. What's mm -hmm. involved in doing that? Mm -hmm. and I, keep, I keep looking for connections. I have tremendous respect for all that you're doing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its potential wisdom generating, you know, garnering, covering the ground of what needs to be covered. It's just very, very powerful, much more powerful than a citizen jury could ever do. Um, mm -hmm. But there's still this, there's a, um, you know, Frances Moore LePay, you know her? Mm -hmm. No, sorry, um, Frances. Frances Moore LePay, okay. L-A-P-P-E. -P -P -E, yeah. Most, most, most famous for her first book, which is called Diet for a Small Planet. Um, oh yeah, yes, yes. And she since went on to democracy as a major focus. Mm -hmm. uh, first it was development policy and then it was democracy. <clears throat> and she created mm -hmm. a whole theory of democracy. And in mm -hmm. it, she talks about the relationship between citizens and experts. Mm -hmm. And citizens are experts on the values of a community. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The whole community, it's like, what do we value? Where do we want to go? What is important to us? And from a cognitive science perspective, you can't make a decision without wanting something. You can use all mm -hmm. the rationality and science you want. And it can clarify everything about all these issues and options, but you can't decide unless you actually want something, which is not a rational thing. It's a simple, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so the idea mm -hmm. in a, in a de democracy in Frankie's uh, version of democracy, it's like the citizens are basically there to articulate and act on the values of the community and the everyday experience of ordinary people. That's what they're mm -hmm. expert in. And mm -hmm. then the experts talk to help, are supposed to ideally say the experts are on tap, not on top. The experts are supposed to help the citizens figure out how to actually achieve where their values are pointing, how to go in that direction, given the complexity of the real world. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can, you can, if you're ignorant, you can push in a particular direction you think is going to work for you and make all kinds of messes mm -hmm. and you actually mm -hmm. get the opposite of what you want. So the experts are there to help the citizens understand mm -hmm. what's really out here. How do we go about actually getting where you want to go? So that's mm -hmm. a division, a job division. And I sense there's something you're sort of mostly centered at the people who know uh, there's a there's a heavy mm -hmm. gravity towards that and there's people who know in diverse ways and you're trying to engage all that uh, mm -hmm. but the generic citizen is, is not in the pool and part of me mm -hmm. I think I wrote that in the first paper part of me mm -hmm. can imagine a scene where mm -hmm. there was like a, a wisdom council an annual wisdom council for Taiwan mm -hmm. or whatever which said this is where our attention mm -hmm. is this is the things we're longing for and mm -hmm. then that somehow plays into what happens in your existing mm -hmm. situation. That's an influence that shapes how people are thinking about all this. Yeah, but, but I mean, people who come to the office hours, either the Taipei ones or the uh, regional ones that uh, happens every other Tuesday, they're, they're ordinary citizens. Yeah, um, everybody's they're, a they're, citizen. Yeah. <laughs> But right, it's, but it's a sense of having a having a um a motivation to show up, certainly. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of having a there's a different identity. Well what I'm from what I've heard so far, the mm -hmm. people who show up have a specific interest in something. They well not not they're, really. They're more I mean, stakeholders I mean, or functions holding a function right. of some kind. Right. So so off the street. Yes. 
but but I, I think um, that's why we have this town hall style dialogues um, in the in the collaborative meeting process. You see, the experts um, are learning from each other's diverse fields in this small room, but on the larger room uh, or on the across the internet on the live stream, there are thousands of people watching. And it is cost them nothing really to pull out their phone and start watching, or it cost them just a little bit to walk to a local town hall and mm -hmm. uh, watch the live streaming with me as the, the anchor um, explaining the moves by the experts. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is a, a second tier of um, involvement that uh, really uh, depends on the aesthetics. That's where the filming, the, the live streaming crew came in. Uh, yeah. as, lo as long as we format it so it's, it's interesting, uh, lots of people will watch it like any other TV show. Uh, and this is an interactive TV show. So the opinions they send, the, the messages they send on Slido and on chat rooms are then filtered into the live streamed mm -hmm. expert meeting. So I, I, I would it's argue. Great, yeah, but it's different. Yeah. It's, different from in, it's different in kind from something to take as an, it's not an ideal necessarily, but as an exemplary, a perfect example of the we the people voice is randomly selecting people mm -hmm. and then having them come to a consensus of some kind is a different yeah. motion than having people yeah, watch. I, 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 should, I should mention that the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall deliberation uh, is a more sortation kind of citizens council. They use random, random selection and um, in, ensure a balance in gender, in age group, in ethnicity, in whatever. What is that? that is proportional. Um, so the Chiang Kai-shek um, um, scenario workshops are um, about this building in Taipei, in central Taipei called the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. Uh, and um, it is a place with very high controversy. Um, there are many people who think of Chiang Kai-shek in a very positive way, and many people who think of Chiang Kai-shek in a very negative way, and right. um, sometimes very mixed. Uh, and so um, what to do with the Memorial Hall uh, becomes a, a, a controversy. And so the Ministry of Culture uh, used this kind of citizen council, uh, but they don't have the, the power to randomly poll um, anyone in Taiwan. So it ends up being an a, a open application process through face-to-face uh, -face, um, counters or over email or over Google form, whatever. And so, but they do get sufficient population so they can have a fair um, poll and representation, uh, statistically speaking. Uh, and they run many, many uh, uh, scenario planning workshops uh, with plenty of informed time and plenty of small group time and so on, all according to the textbook uh -huh. uh, about, about the CKS thing. And um, the, the fact that most of the facilitators overlap with the Vita one community at some point, is not a coincidence, <clears throat> but, yeah. but, it, but because the process, as you said, is completely different philosophically, mm -hmm. uh, that case is not uh, listed on Vita one, nor we will say it's a Vita one project. Right. Well, I'm, it's one of the things I'm, I'm glad I got clear on, and I have an ongoing, an ongoing inquiry into the relationship between the stakeholder way of cutting the pie and the citizen public way of cutting the pie. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting rapidly engaged between the engagement with you and the engagement with the Emerging Network Governance Initiative. I'm rapidly learning how to think about this. Um, but I'm still intrigued. It feels like there's a potential synergy uh, mm -hmm. and there's a funny way in which because the parliament is elected, mm -hmm. there's a way they can, like you say, you don't have the influence on parliament that you have on the um, ministries. Mm -hmm. uh, and it feels like the connection to the, the we the people public kind of mm -hmm. Thing would give more leverage over Parliament too, because that's mm -hmm. to elect Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's right, I, I do agree. I do agree, and and I'm going to the Parliament to talk about one possible merger between the two models as part of the Digital Communication Act. So uh, I have to go, and Shu Yang will carry oh. on conversation <laughs> okay. and send me the recording. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Absolutely fascinating. Okay, hopefully mm -hmm. she'll. She uh -huh. gonna tell me what he's going to say. Anyway, bye bye. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks. All right. Uh, well.
Wow. So I'll, I'll be happy to stay for um, another 30 to 40 minutes. Um, okay. Before lunch time. And yeah, it's pretty, it's, yeah, for me, it's a lot of learning also from Audrey. So uh, uh -huh. yeah. I bet. Wow. What a position <laughs> you got. <laughs> yeah, I think quite privileged. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good um, opportunity to be, to work with many amazing people. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Audrey is going to, uh, be a she's witness at a parliamentary hearing of some kind or yeah know? she's going to uh the parliament meeting so she uh in, in the parliament period uh, she uh, attend the meeting um every week and yeah she, the, the many will be uh -huh. uh, um just sitting there and uh using her computer and checking what's going on and trying to participate uh in in a very limited way because actually she couldn't be answering questions from the MPs. Um, so she'll be there to kind of understand the situation over there. But yeah. So I think we, we are, are we still um, um, discussing about, um, I don't know if you have, you have more questions you want to, you want to. No, I, like, I do, but I'm, I'm curious. I'm, since we're at this point, I'm curious what uh, she was talking about integrating the, some kind of integration uh, mm -hmm. between um, between what you're doing and, and Parliament. I'm wondering what is what is that piece of the puzzle? Can you describe a bit of that? Or yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a. I, I'm not sure if I can describe the whole piece. <laughs> I okay. think it was a very limited um, observation. A little um, tape. But I, from. Um, I think the, the storyline will be from uh, we are doing this uh, experiment actually called v Taiwan, right? We're trying to experiment an open consultation model um, from this public private uh, space, which is it's because v Taiwan is public fund but private operate by the community. Um, but there, this also connects to the last slide. The last slides uh, when we talk about if we should institu institutionalize v Taiwan, in a way, if uh, the participation from the government side or from the citizen side should be regulated. So actually, we're talking about if um, if there should be a regulation to talk about um, the the government should provide the platform that is um, uh, open for the citizens to be involved in policy making process. And if that is the case, we are kind of regulating um, the, the government's involvement uh, to, to, to have conversation with citizens uh, on the policy making process. So, uh, so you, can, you can see that if you are familiar with uh, the pork and merge uh, um, uh, idea uh, from GovZero's uh, community to the Gov government's com government uh, organization right now. Uh, we did we did lots of uh, in the GovZero Gov Zero community did lots of uh, forking projects to 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 the community and then when they create some kind of better experience website or uh, projects the government sometimes merge it back. And I think V Taiwan is uh, experiments also from GovZero to try to prototype a, a open consultation process. And if the government in the end is interested in merging this process back and uh, writing a regulation around it, um, then we are, we meaning then the, the, the government is trying to um, institutionalize V Taiwan. So there's actually um, a regulation called uh, National Communication Regulation. The digital communication, digital communication regulation is actually writing that the government should um, provide a platform just inspired by V Taiwan, um, mm. and that provides a platform for 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 citizen participation. So I think Audrey was talking about that, mm -hmm. and um, and that's still still in the parliament. We we're not sure. Um, if it's gonna pass or not, but we're really looking forward to to have that because that means um, we are having this V Taiwan experiment in the in the public private site, but also having a merging back um, mm -hmm. version uh, in the, in the government as well. That's a funny. I can feel tr trade offs. You know the word trade offs. Yeah. Uh, the sense of the. If the government is going to make a, a policy regulation, you know, a law about something, 
it has a certain solidity to it. Uh, and what's one of the most powerful things about V Taiwan is its liquidity. You know, it's like it flows and changes all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. You can't, you can't, uh, you can't. You can have. You can have guidelines, but you can't have. <laughs> here's ABC. The, the yeah. government's going to want to do an ABC, and you're not an ABC. You're you're yeah. the river. If this law, if this regulation is going to take a few months to pass, then we can't really uh, expect the government will run V Taiwan as fluid as V Taiwan's community. So I do think it's important to have both uh, forks, uh -huh. both right, right. the government regulation and the V Taiwan experiment uh, living at the same time. If you can have a, somehow have the, uh, an, a review, say an annual review of, the policy, whatever policy the government makes about this, have it include review of the policy every year by a public participation process or by a V Taiwan process uh, yeah. so that it has a chance to evolve, even though it's going to be evolving in a more jerky step by step way rather than in the flow way that you guys have, having something in the law that says how that law is going to be reviewed and changed would be valuable. Yeah, every year, every month, every week. We can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be, like every week. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. If you got you guys just reviewed it anyway, you know. Yeah, we. Um, I, I just had this conversation with uh, Eric Gordon from Emerson's College um, about this um, uh, its vision of having a platform provided by the, the government, no matter what form it will, it will be in the future. And to have this V Taiwan kind of um, open consultation process. And he was arguing if we should really let this recursive public running this recursive process so rapidly, should it be a month, a day, or a week, or, <laughs> or well, a month, year? <laughs> yeah, part of what I got, yeah, you're, you, if, if you make it official, then it has to have some periodicity, but you guys don't have anything like that. It's always, there's, there's certain rhythms, but there's, they're overlapping rhythms and they have different, different, uh, some, some of the rhythms of your work go like this and some of the rhythms of your work go in more, more slower kinds of things. It's yeah, all over yeah. the map. Of course, yeah, there are different policies should go in different rhythms. Mm -hmm. And it also makes sense to have this community or, yeah, um, this, uh, yeah, you mentioned abstract public and there's, there's also another term called mini public. I'm very curious on what's the difference you think around these two terms. Mini public and? And um, abstract public. Oh, the abstract public is a pure abstraction. It's like the public, well, it's like public opinion polls. This is what the public thinks. And mm -hmm. a mini public is a, is a specific, form of public engagement, which is a, on usually randomly selected, sometimes scientifically demo, demographically balanced uh, group of people who deliberate in some form on a specific public issue. That's a mini public. That's a, within the world of deliberative democracy, that right. phrase mini public means that kind of, uh, yeah. of forum. Mix of diverse of people who is who could represent uh, the, the, the public. Yeah, they're, they're across, what's called cross-section. Right. You know, a, 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 a microcosm of the macrocosm, a small version of the larger public. Since you can't, you can't, like you guys know, you can't facilitate millions of people, but you could facilitate a small group of dozens or hundreds of people uh, and have them come up with something and then you would assume that that was something like what you get if you did the same yeah. process with all those people and everybody in the society. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think police did help us to uh, kind of facilitate more people than a, one person could. Um, but how, how would you right. describe V Taiwan's community in this public uh, term? <clears throat> Um, well, I don't see uh, the the organizing principle or the organizing. Um, I don't know what the right word for it is. Uh, 
the way v Taiwan cuts up the pie of the population in its effort to have you know consultation is by the the standard of stakeholder uh, and stakeholder has to do with one's i one's relationship to the issue yeah uh and it's always and, different stakeholders yes mm -hmm. uh and in the public it's more your identity with the community of place you know there's the yeah the Come general in. public is everybody in a country and then usually you can have the the uh the citizen or the citizens of the town right. who are the or the electorate i guess you could say electorate because the elections are organized by you know community levels levels of place-based organization you know here in the united states you have a city or town and you have the county and you have them we actually we actually didn't um, uh, limit people from other countries to participate in Taiwan. Actually, there uh -huh. are so many, so many international people. Um, we count as a community as well. There's a way in which that makes sense if your focus is on diversity. You know, because the diversity having having the more perspectives you can integrate, the more you cover the ground that needs to be covered. Yeah. If, if you were to have all the people who are not Taiwanese be the people who are defining what happened in Taiwan, that wouldn't make sense. But including people who aren't Taiwanese into the discussions of Taiwan would make sense because they bring new perspectives. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. that's true. So we, we always have Taiwanese people. So. Right, so I, I know. That's more, <laughs> more <laughs> right. Um, so from my, I, I tend to be biased towards diversity but i haven't attended to stakeholder mm -hmm. up until the last year i haven't really looked carefully at what all the stakeholder collaborations and stuff that are going around have to do with the we the people voice which is sort of in the u.s we have this we the people thing tradition yeah yeah it's in the, con the constitution we the people of the united states blah 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 uh, oh yeah so that's a that's a meme that is that is part of our culture, uh, and so I have been thinking, okay, well, we the people is behaving, you know, stupidly at best, if not insanely, right now. So how could you help we the people collectively be wise? That's been my inquiry, uh, and now I'm extending that because part one of the definitions of democracy is that the people who are affected by a decision or participate in making it. Mm -hmm. And that's much more of a stakeholder perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm now really interested in what's happening in the world of stakeholder stuff and what you're doing is definitely that, but I still have my roots in this other frame of reference. And I'm, because diversity, <laughs> because diversity is a resource for better decisions, I'm interested in how the diverse, those two frames of reference which are very different, fit together. And yeah, it, it is. It is very different. I'm also very new to 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 this process of uh, implementing or making um, democracy in, in in Taiwan. And for me, it's it's really important to like 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 what I think very similar to what you're doing. But I'm trying to uh, understand our definition to to what democracy is actually about. Mm -hmm. And um what kind of democracy is it direct or is it digital or is it fluid democracy we're trying to to <laughs> achieve uh, in the end and uh, different powers from different kinds of technology we could use mm -hmm. um, yeah. most of the kinds that you've named have at their center voting hmm. you know if you're liquid democracy, you get to delegate your vote to somebody else. You know, if you're direct democracy, you get to vote on every every policy that's being made. Uh, so there's different, but for me, yeah. voting is such a low, compared to deliberation, voting is a very low. Participation. Form, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a low form of participation. It's a low form of collective intelligence. Right. Part of what's so amazing about Paul S mm -hmm. is it is generating wisdom out of voting 
There's no <laughs> interaction people talking together in Polis itself. You have you have people talking together before and after Polis, but Polis itself, you don't have any back and forth nuance. No. Let me take into consideration what you're thinking. You just have, do I agree or disagree with this? You know. Right. Yeah. And then but out of that, you generate a consensus. And I look at it, I go, what the fuck's going on there? <laughs> it's interesting you look at, because the voting ways to just to connect different comments and uh, mm -hmm. it's actually possible to divide uh, not only yes and no, or I don't know, three options to more options. So there could be a scale of seven <laughs> or 10 options in the end. That's something I, I, one of my questions was what would happen if you had a, you know, minus five to plus five scale that you voted on yeah. with that what are the what are the things that would be good about that and what are the things that would be problematic about that hmm. i don't know how to think at that level i've got that that you're you're making clusters of groups of shared belief kind of and then you're looking for among these diverse communities of shared belief uh right. what do they all agree on that that's just the brilliant Shit, right. I love that. And I don't know, maybe come too complex to have shades of agreement. How does the algorithm deal with that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's just the, uh, the fertility of this consensus will be different if we have more scales on the vote. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at police algorithm, it's more like, it's exactly um, the same logic behind uh, Netflix when people are watching videos, movies on the internet. Mm -hmm. And if like I watch the same, set of videos as you do then we probably will be uh, categorized in the same group on polis mm -hmm. so you can you can if you can think in, in that analogy um and uh for me if i vote or if i the 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 the, the measurement of i watch a video um and uh could be could be just on and off i watch or i don't watch um but it could also be i watch for like 20 minutes i right, right, right. In the, in the video yes. watching and so on so the, the, the algorithm will just more delicate on um on mm -hmm. shaping this consensus on what video to to present to you or what kind of consensus you are going to be uh. attached to uh in in, in a sense so I, I do think it makes sense but also it depends on what how if it's really necessary for for us to uh to have low let fidelity of consensus um on every issue yeah, maybe, maybe I yeah. would think that. Hmm. See, one of the, one of my, one of the things I've concluded without having enough ed evidence to really conclude it is that there's two kinds of consensus that Paulus facilitates. One is a, and if I knew Chinese, I could evaluate this better because I could look at that, some of the actual results. Uh, but one is a, a very shallow consensus that avoids the kinds of things that cause people to be conflicted. You know, everybody should have a right to breathe. Well, of course, everybody's going to say that, you know, who's going to say you don't have a right to breathe? You know, so that's a shallow consensus. And then there's the person who has a brilliant idea that nobody else thought of that happens to cover more ground than anything anybody on any of the sides thought of and is simple enough to recognize that fact. <clears throat> And that could surface in a polis, right. <clears throat> in a polis exercise, and that's yeah. a more wise, deeper kind of consensus. Right. What I'm used to, in terms of consensus, is largely based on concerns. You know, here's my proposal, and and people go, oh yeah, let's do that, and then the facilitator goes, so does anybody have any concerns about this? This is it's related to the what's your the rough consensus idea. <clears throat> which has a whole categorizing of what kind of concerns are legitimate uh, to block consensus and which aren't, et cetera. But the whole idea of concerns, when you have a concern, it means there's something you're not taking into account. <clears throat> and my, when, when, well, some of the group's not taking something into account, it's a member of the group has a concern. Hmm. And then do you, have, do you take the time to try to take that into account? And part of my theory of shared wisdom is the more, the better you do that job of trying to take into account differences and disturbances, 
the more ground you're going to cover and the wiser your decision is going to be. Hmm. But you can't right. necessarily in all circumstances take that kind of time. So right. ideas like rough consensus are help us navigate that challenge. Uh, but when I look at polis, one of the, my instant things with polis is here's the agreements, here's the disagreements. You end up with something that is 90% of the people on both sides of the two major disagreement yeah. camps like this item, but there's mm -hmm. still some people who have concerns about it. Right. Don't right. like it. Those yeah. people, if you could talk to those people and say, what are your concerns and have teams of people who work specifically trying to figure out how to address those concerns, right. you could increase the percentage of agreement around that item and right. make it more wise. So that's right. part of how I would love to use. I would yeah. love to use. Polis. <laughs> of course, yeah, that sounds really cool. Because the, I, I, I'm also in contact with the development team of Polis right now, and I, mm -hmm. I think they're uh, making a new visualization, which actually has. <clears throat> I think it has that that feature um, because it it it, it can lay out all the comments um, on the Polis conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, in along along uh, a scale that is um, the the consensus uh, level, so uh -huh. we can from one end that's like super uh, consensus comment uh, comment that has super consensus a really good consensus, mm -hmm. and on the, the other end will be uh, the very controversial comments. Mm -hmm. So you can of course uh, go through all the com uh, comments uh, that that has um, that 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 is uh, part of the consensus. But also, if you have time, you can also go through more comments that has uh, controversial points. There is, yeah. There's a um, in what I sent. Did you see that ten page thing uh, that I sent to Audrey? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 before the first conversation, and there's a using concern section on the eighth page that I talk about the different things that could be done with Paulus and about a, a game, an online game. Talk about mm. designing for fun. Uh, right. It's a mixture of competition and cooperation and you get, uh, you have, you, you take an issue and you get to pick the issue you want to work on and you are part of a team and the, the, uh, algorithm of the game helps you decide how how diverse a team do you want to be a member of do you want to be a member of a team that basically believes like you do or would you like to be a member of a team that's like really different and you hmm. get more points the more diverse the team is that hmm. you're on the more points you get for succeeding and coming to agreement hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. you are and, and the, the way I designed it, which I don't know, I have a feeling there's a polis version of this that would be even simpler than what I'm thinking of. In my design, you have, okay, you have 10 people on a team and they're all different and they each write a little statement of how they would solve whatever the problem is, whatever the issue is. And then they do, con they share their concerns about each other's statements. Right. And mm -hmm. then their job is to collectively try and handle those concerns and mm. come up with an agreement that covers all their concerns. And of course, the more different they are, the more hard, the more difficult that is. And right. so the more different you are and the greater level of agreement you come to, both of those give you points. And your team gets points for coming up with, if you, you get 10,000 points, if your team is the most diverse that the algorithm can possibly design, and you come up with a hundred percent agreement, and then your solution is posted in the larger, uh, in the larger field of participants in the gaming, this gaming community, and other people can give you points for how good your solution is and all that. And I was suggesting that as a, there's a billionaire in the U.S. who's created a, a, a thing called Brigade, which is a way for people to talk about issues and organize to advocate them. And I was thinking of this as a a game that is attached to the brigade citizenship software and <laughs> ideas which get successfully from which come out as winning ideas in the game would move over into brigade to organize for actually advocating them and getting them used 
How do you spell brigade? B R I G A D E. B R I G. It's a military term for a, a, a level of, of military organization. But in the political world, it's like you're organizing your brigade to fight in the in the political world for your favorite idea. Uh, but I was trying to say, let's try and let's try and privilege ideas that are actually wiser than other ideas. Hmm. And we can make a game. It's a serious game, but it's still a game. You are in competition. It's more like Olympics. This is a right. deliberative. I haven't thought of framing it as a deliberative Olympics, but it could be. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, we're we're coming up with this uh this new project. Um, we're still looking for people in place to 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 work on that. It's called Holopolis. It's kind of using Polis library. So we are now trying to run a Polis server um, locally and uh, pull of, pull out some data some uh, data we you we we had uh, like from from for example we have the data of uh, Uber's conversation for like unmanned vehicle conversation and so on so we can um, use those data and APIs from Polis to kind of create a new experience and now we're thinking to make it in the VR environment but we, it could be just a fun games uh, in any place. Huh. <laughs> I can't even envision what that would be, but I'm, I, one of the other questions was, could, what would it be like to have a comment section attached to every item that shows up in Polis? So like Wikipedia, you have each Wikipedia page has a discussion section attached to it automatically, even if nobody's done anything with it. What would it be like to have a discussion page the discussion right. dimension of each item. When you put an item in, not only do people vote yes or no, but there's also a whole discussion that can unfold on it. People right. might read the discussion before they vote their yes or no. You know? Right, right, right. That's important. That, that's what is sense the project uh, called Sense the TW, TW uh, already mentioned uh, Nari also. And it's about it's, I think I think it's more like a study group uh, online altogether for people to read different materials and and uh, highlight uh, points and cons online, and so we can we can share our um, perspective when perspectives when we read uh, similar documents, so that will give a rough understanding on different issues. So imagine we launch an issue and there will be. Um, we'll, we'll ask this database uh, with people's readings and notes already uh, ready over there uh, and um, say we key the issue say uh, unbanned vehicle and anything around this topic um, any kind of reading materials notes comments thoughts um, comments on social medias and so on will be uh, ready there as a like big mm -hmm. package of um, um, background materials to start with. If you want to work on this issue, here's a lot of stuff to work with. <laughs> kind of, yeah. is that where you... <clears throat> but I would, one of the things, that, the way we think of pros and cons comes out of the adversarial debate system. Hmm. And I want to highlight the fact that concerns is an example of something that is not part of debate logic. A right. concern is an invitation to figure out how to deal with a concern. Whereas pro and con is which, do you have more pros and, and fewer cons? Let's do it if there's more pros and cons. It's a, a trade-off yeah, kind of thing rather than let's figure it out right. and make it better. So in the system where you're planning to put pros and cons, that's fine. But I would say have a place for concerns and things to address those concerns. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's my suggestion for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell the sense team. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure if they, yeah, they, they do have pros and cons, but what I think is very valuable is about collaborating, uh, correct, collaboratively coming up with uh, um, kind of shared notes around different, mm -hmm. around this issue. You think that that's part of what they're planning on anyway, is somewhere in there is having a, people working yeah. together to figure out a way to. Yeah, I think it's important to figure out how people work together, even mm -hmm. uh, especially collaborative and especially in online space because we don't always live in the same place. <laughs> yeah, part yeah. of one of the definitions I've had for collective intelligence or standards I've had for collective intelligence, which doesn't, doesn't fit the Paulus experience as it's currently organized, is that what comes out of it is something 
that no one in the room came in with and that is better than anything anybody came in the room with in in a in 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 a in any kind of conversation interaction discussion deliberation is what you come up with at the end as a group better than anything anybody came into the group with yeah 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 and what happens in polis is the best things that somebody comes in the room with get picked for their consensus value but there's right. no there's nothing to redesign any of those things so that they're even better than they were before uh yeah mm, I, I, mm, yeah you're, you're very right uh you're but very that right. can't happen in the subsequent discussion that's part of what the saving grace of polis in the right. context of e taiwan is that there's all this discussion before and after the the um polis exercise happens the polis right. just helps focus things yeah we're where we observed some um, users' behavior uh, when they use polis, they tend to rewrite a, a comment in their own way. So I think there will be one like example huh. to to think of collective intelligence. But of course, it's not really designed. They don't have to rewrite other people's comments. Right, right. But they're saying that when somebody sees a comment, they can disagree with it, and they tend to. There's some people who will disagree with it. And then submit yeah. a comment, comment that handles their disagreement. Yeah, exactly. It happens mm -hmm. in Uber's case. Very, uh, it's very obviously. Uh, uh, uh. You can see many comments like that. People, you can see two uh, very controversial groups from taxi drivers and Uber, or poor Uber or against Uber. And uh, you, you'll see some people come up and try to merge these two sides comment into one comment, which more more neutral we can say in a way uh, okay. and, and, and try to uh, get more votes more likes yeah huh. so in that way I, I thank don't you yeah that's that's that. right that's yeah, very but, much in a deliberative conversation people right. are individually saying their piece in an right. effort to address what other people are saying so that is in fact a deliberative conversation yeah, I'm not sure if it's oh, actually because of the in the begin in the in the interface they don't have much to to read about. They probably will go through the, the social media and so on. Um, but they um, could actually go through all the different comments and try to think of their comments. And maybe because the, all the materials they are looking at is is uh, from these two different two very controversial uh, groups. And when they tend to when they write, they tend to write a comment that is more neutral and try to get uh, agreement with uh, both sides. So I think that's a very beautiful um, user scenario when they were in the beginning, four different groups on the police visualization and then merged to two and then merged to like two overlapped with one major um, consensus. Uh -huh. right. So I'm, that's, that raises two other issues I had about Paula's questions I had right. is when What, what, what decides what the person who's going to say agree or disagree sees? Do they have the list of comments and they pick one and they say, I want to say disagree or disagree with this? Or do they get randomly thrown up a comment that the, the system says, okay, here's a comment for you to vote on. Here's a comment for you to vote on. And you don't see all the comments. You just see the one in front of you that the system gives you. Uh, is the system random or is it is it pushing up comments that haven't been voted on so much or what what decides which comment i'm going to see in order to vote on it yeah that's really important and um, i think they changed the algorithm throughout the past few months um, um but I, I i can for sure check with the developers there um but the, the statistics shows um most people vote for 20 comments and, and beef and only very mm -hmm. people really interest will will vote for more than twenty. So it's really important to know what other first twenty comments were shown to the users. And uh, there are some priorities, um, but comes in turns. So we don't really the police people don't police team don't really um, push all the new comments to the first twenty to the users. Um, but there are some priorities like the comments who uh, which is. Uh, uh, created, for example, created by people who voted more. Uh, the comments who uh, the comments which uh, is a new comment, uh, for example, and 
maybe um, the comment that has a more um, imbalanced voting is either very controversial. Maybe many people disagree with that, and many people uh, disagree with that. It will be will be also shown up more. But there, there's a oh, always okay. a line, and I, I'm I'm not sure because I think they they thought about it and they try to make there's some behind vision or behind um, ideal conversation they want to achieve. So in order to, to do that, I do think intensively about what comments uh, comes first. Um, but, Very yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. so they've been thinking about these different dimensions and trying to weave them into the algorithm. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that the people who voted, who gave comments later would be disadvantaged and they're trying to counter that with part yeah. of their algorithm. That's more like inclusiveness mm -hmm. and there will be, yeah. uh, Trying to figure out the controversial, uh, controversial comments. I was wondering if the consensus comment shows up. If you track the con the consensus comment over time, does it drift in and out of consensus? Uh, and I don't I have no idea, but it just occurred to me that would be possible. The consensus is the consensus gets stronger and stronger and more solid, or it's it's like eighty percent of both sides like it, and sort of stays there. A hundred people vote, a thousand people vote. It's still the same. Or does it go eighty, seventy, sixty, a hundred? You know, hundred, blah blah blah. But dances back and forth. I don't know. Yeah, we can blame on the algorithm. And I think, um, <laughs> um, well, what I know also is they they not only look at the comments, but they also try to figure out the uh, the persona behind those comments. So now they're sliding in some questions when people uh, vote. So not only the 20 uh, comments they, they have to vote, um, but also they, they can vote, but also um, uh, there'll be some questions asking uh, what gender you are, what age you, you are around, and what kind of uh, people, uh, what kind of background you're working with and, and so on. So, so those, those questions they gather, I think will be useful to kind of input their algorithm in the end. Hmm. Huh. There's a lot you to go soon. You have to go <laughs> soon, I know too. But I just yeah. remembered another there's another methodology called um uh oh what is it? Synonym, but it's spelled S Y N A N I M. Uh and it was years ago I talked to the guy who started it before he he became, you know, put it into private you know, private use, but it had, part of its logic was it was, it, it had groups of 10 people who were doing proposals and then reading each other's proposals and then revising their proposals and reading each other's proposals. And it was, it was noting in that cycle, who in the group tended to be, be chosen. Yeah, oh, that's right. When you, after they'd, everybody would write a proposal, they'd have, everybody would have to pick one of the proposals to revise. Hmm. So okay. the software yeah. is watching whose proposal is most, are most people choosing to revise. Hmm. That's one thing it's watching. And then they're watching whose proposal does each person choose to revise. So, and out of those two dimensions, they are seeing whose mind seems to reflect the group's mind. <laughs> you know, okay. you know the, yeah. the, the ideal person would be the person who always chooses the proposal everybody else chooses and their proposal is the one everybody else chooses. So yeah. that person has the most points in the group mind. And if they have a thousand people working in, on, on whatever the question is, then they can in groups all in groups of tens, they will pick those people who were the most reflected the group mind for a next level of groups, you know, right. one person from each group, and that's the person who's picked from each group. And I feel like there's something like that that uh, that you that the uh, polis could do. Yeah. Just note yeah. It, yeah, we who's can. who is voting most like other people hmm. and and studying yeah. that person's <laughs> yeah. responses. Yeah. Anyway, I, I think your time is practically up. Our time is practically up.
yeah well, say, thank you so much for for your yeah. time it's just really well conversation and maybe i can yeah I, I will i'll try to read more and maybe i i think soon i will try to arrange another call with you to ask you more questions <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. so if you have well, more I'm, questions, we can we can answer in, in email or we can even arrange another call are are you going to be in seattle by any chance uh no no i i'm not okay. coming this year uh not okay. as i know for now yeah i'm coming to new york to okay. the Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be in Seattle to see Audrey while I'm there. Uh, yeah. But next week, I'm hoping to have another call like this. Audrey says the week or two after that, we won't be able to do it. But your Friday, my Thursday, on uh, next week, I'll be here at the same time. Okay. Uh, it's fun having you involved in it. I would love to have you also if you if you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best to to be part of this. Uh, interesting long conversation <laughs> and i will watch this video again get myself sorted out and have a new set of questions yeah also so i i, I remember you mentioned some um uh, maybe some suggestions you want to send to polystine and if that's the case <laughs> i would probably do that as well okay yeah well, i would again i don't if you look at the that page seven or eight, whatever it was, and the thing that I sent, the 10 page thing, right. it has my thoughts there. But as usual, I would love to be in conversation with them, which I may when I go up there in the end of April uh, to talk with Audrey. I mean, he's going to be visiting with them. I may have a chance to talk with them yeah. also in that time. Mm -hmm. But I'm more, I'm more interested in seeing what comes out of the discussion that wasn't there at the start. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna do some experiment on that. Yeah, right. we'll, be, we'll let you up, update it also. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank okay, you. I'll dismiss mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Uh,